What's going on everybody? Gentleman94 here. Welcome back to what is Ben going to build next? This is candidate number three we're looking at today and this is the F-84G Thunderjet. This is a Revell model so it's Revell monogram and it's a pretty nice looking kit. Some of you might vote on this one so it's all good. Let's go ahead and check it out then. Skill level two apparently. I don't know what that means. Let's open it up and see what we have inside. Now the F-84 has always been one of my favorite straight-winged uh, Korean War era fighter jets. It's just one of the coolest, most rugged of the Korean War era jets. So let's go ahead and take a look at it here. I'll just pull some of the parts out. Um, I haven't opened up any of these uh, plastic bags, so I'm not sure how the plastic feels, but it looks pretty good. These are all recessed panel lines, so that should be nice. Comes with a nuclear bomb shape, which is kind of interesting. I don't believe we ever really carried nukes on an F-84, but uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. The standard loadout here for the F-84s are usually bombs and rockets, and we have a nice complement of bombs and rockets in here, so that's all right. Cockpit looks good. Ailerons look good. Might have to do a few alterations on a couple of areas, but overall, not a bad looking set of plastic. And here are the clear parts. Um, interesting thing to note is that it comes with both the early unreinforced canopy, which we would have seen on the F-84Es, and it also comes with a reinforced canopy that was retrofitted to the E's and was standard on the G model. So that's kind of interesting. If you wanted to, you could backdate it and make it an E but I'm not really going to. I'm going to keep it the G because that's what it is. Why bother backdating it? If I really want an E, I could go out and buy an E and just I'd have an extra canopy. So nothing wrong with that. Reinforcement, reinforcing strips look pretty good. I don't see any real issues with that. So it's going to mask off really well. They're subtle, but they're raised. So you can go ahead and get a nice clean line of tape in there or a liquid mask, whatever you prefer. Here's the last bag here in the Revell kit. Uh, I got the fuselage got the wings. See this is where the opening where you would actually put the different side panels in. For this one's being a, a G, we're going to put the one that comes in the kit that has the blow-in doors. This area here is really one of the only areas that changes from F84Es to Gs. There's one other addition of additional panel lines on the wings for a uh, mid-air refueling probe receptacle. As you can see here this panel will actually fit right in this fuselage area so it'll go right in there and that will give us the G because it has the blow indoors. A lot of kits will do that nowadays you know Monogram, Ravel, Tamiya, Edward, Hasegawa is a big one that does that a lot. I built their P40 kit it's pretty much the same way so it's kind of neat. So let's take a look at the instructions. This is a very standard Ravel monogram looking instruction booklet here. You have your basic steps. They talk about different sub-assemblies like the wings and the landing gears and the speed brakes and all of that. And they go into the final assembly and weapon assemblies and all that. So that's just kind of neat. I don't think I'm going to be using the nuclear bomb shape as I want to build something that was in the Korean War. And they didn't carry nukes in the Korean War. Good, you can build the flaps up or down. I'd probably build them down. I might remove the mid-air refueling probe um, on the wingtip tanks any of the combat photos I've ever seen, none of them have mid-air refueling probes. So those might actually be removed. I don't know for sure. Last page, you usually have a spread of the different ones you can build. I've actually seen F-84s with this exact marking on it. It's actually on the front cover of one of my reference sources. And then back here you have your stencils. So looks good. Let's go ahead and look at the decals now. Speaking of stencils protective wax covering here. A lot of stencils. Some of these early 50s jets, they have a ton of stencils. And different openings and doors and, and latches and all sorts of things. The USAF is actually modeled here. We have to use this one section to go ahead and put on the landing gear cover. And the other section goes on the wings. Nice job on the decals there, Ravel. Looks pretty good. Let's put that away. One of the issues I have with the F-84 here is that this is a natural metal finish aircraft. Natural metal finish is not something that's very easy to do. I have to polish it, we're going to have to touch it up, we're going to have to do a lot of care trying to get these guys to look as good as possible. It has to be smooth too. It can't be rough. It has to be highly, highly polished in order for that shine and that metal look to uh, really look realistic. Good. Now, I'd mentioned last time, I mentioned a little bit about air brakes. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the air brakes here in this version. This is a G model, so it is a late model. This would have been used towards the tail end of Korea. 
Now you'll see this is the air brake right here. It's used in the bottom of the fuselage to go ahead and deploy and slow the aircraft down. You can see this is the uh, back part of the fuse speed brake and the top section here is the top part. Now this is perforated metal, or at least it's supposed to be perforated metal. So what I might end up doing is taking a drill bit and going ahead and clearing out every single one of those little holes. It would take a long time to do, but I could clear out every single one of those little holes, sand out the back here so that it, it appears a little bit easier to do, a little thinner, and make it transparent so you can actually look through and it will look like perforated metal. Now let's talk about references real quick. Again, this is going to look real familiar. This is another detail and scale book by Bert Kinsey, and this is about the F-84 Thunderjet. Now this covers the prototypes, A, B, C, the D version, E version, and then it goes to the G version. It doesn't cover the F-84F, because the F-84F was actually a swept wing fighter that uh, we actually have some kits of, but I'm not really interested in building at this time. So this book is really geared towards modelers. There's a lot of cool detailed pictures, a lot of F-84E pictures, but there's not a lot of difference between the E and the G, aside from the basic uh, mid-air refueling probes. So you have, you know, your markings for foreign nations, details of blow-in doors and, and of different areas there on the model. Some good in-flight shots of the F-84Gs showing specific uh, units and all that. So this is going to be a really helpful guide to go ahead and, and give you an idea of what the aircraft did. You can see right here, this is the mid-air refueling receptacle that was located on the F-84G, and it would have been normally closed. And these panel lines are included in this model, so if you were backdating it for some odd reason, you'd have to seal all those panel lines. I might also have to remove the mid-air refueling probe off of the wingtip tanks because it wasn't carried on every single G. It was an option that they could use, but I don't think it was a standard equipment. Another thing about actually all these aircraft that I'm talking about except for the Hellcat, all of these guys are tricycle landing gears. So that's going to be interesting to see if we can't weight down the front of this nose. I have one other book that I'm going to be using as reference, and that is a book called MIG Alley. And MIG Alley, as you can see, it is quite um, a used book. I have been using this for years and years and years. But it's got some great shots, some action shots um, of F-84s. You know, here's an F-84E here, and there's no blowing door, so we know it's an E. Here's an F-84G at the bottom here, because you can see the blowing door, that you know it's an F-84G. A lot of it, though, focuses on the F-86 Sabre and the fights with the MiG-15s. So if you want an interesting book about MIG Alley and Sabre versus, you know, MIG um, dogfights, this is a pretty decent book. I think you can still get it, too. Another book I can use as reference. Coupled with the F-84 Detail and Scale book, I think I'm fairly well set for reference material on the F-84. If you think this is a good kit to build, go ahead and leave a comment, you know. Let me know if this is the one you'd like to see me build. That is the end of the F-84. Go ahead and click on the next link. Watch the next video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.